right, so we got the uh, quick change gearbox here off of the blonde, and you can see how nasty this machine is. And this is typical of an older machine like this. And what I've done is I've taken the number plates off of it. This is the plate that tells you where to line everything up for the threading. And I generally always take these off before I start any serious cleaning because sometimes these are aluminum. This one in particular is not, but a lot of times they are and certain degreasers will eat aluminum so beware of that now this thing is very 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 greasy and you can see all the grease we've scraped off just you know kind of trying to get a few things off of this there's a lot of uh, chips in here too this wasn't cleaned very well the good thing about something being very greasy though is not a lot of rust another thing you can see there's about four to six layers of paint on this that kind of shows that someone at least cared about it enough to keep it painted on the other hand it also may show that this was owned by a machinery resale company you know maybe a few times in its life because it was typical for machine companies especially in the 50s 60s to repaint older machines when they got a hold of them make them look fresh so they could sell them easier you see there's some yellow paint there over the years working on these machines I've noticed that a lot of times if a school got a hold of a machine, they would paint a lot of mechanism safety yellow. Just for, I guess, their insurance purposes and, you know, keep people safe. But I think what we're going to do with this, since it's so greasy, is we're going to submerge this whole unit. We're going to take it apart and clean it good anyway and oil it back up so it's not going to hurt it. We're going to submerge this entire unit in an industrial degreaser and just let it soak for a while so we can get rid of a lot of this just easy before we do our deep cleaning and as I mentioned before in a previous video there's the bottom handle that's broke it's broke right here it should have a piece sticking out here that you could shift and there's three positions for this bottom handle and I have as of yet to find one of these so we're good, probably just gonna end up making that making making the end piece here and, and welding it on that, that won't be too hard at least that's that's it and we'll get it soaking and rebuild this gearbox all right, so I just want to add to the gearbox here. When we were taking this apart, this is the end. Uh, well, this is the front and the top. And this is the end that you have your drive screw and your lead screw coming off of. Now, the lead screw just keys into this because it actually runs off of the drive screw. What I want to show you here, this drive screw has this clutch assembly on it with the gear that runs your lead screw. That slip, the lead screw gear slips in and out of this if you need it to. So I want to show you a common problem. This thing is put on a taper pin. And if you've rebuilt machinery or worked on older stuff, or if you're a machinist, you're acquainted with these taper pins. You're also probably acquainted with what people do with these taper pins because they don't understand them. And that's what had happened here. A uh, taper pin is exactly what it, it's called. It tapers. It's bigger on one end, smaller on the other, and it's driven in a tapered hole, which means it's got to be driven out a certain way. Well, this thing is put on here, taper pin in. Somebody had tried to take this off at some point in its life, and they had dri tried to drive the pin out the wrong way. And instead of stopping, figuring out what they were doing wrong, they just kept hammering on this thing and had really sunk this pin in. Well, this taper pin has nowhere to go and you're beating on it, but deeper and deeper and deeper, which also, because of the way the shaft is, will expand the shaft a little bit. And that's what it did. It kind of bugged the shaft out inside this sleeve, which made it very difficult for us to get off of there. So difficult, in fact, that it would not come off as is. I heated this thing, tried heated the outside trying to expand the sleeve where maybe I could get it off. Just wasn't happening. To start with, I couldn't get the pin out at all. I ended up having to drill this pin out. And when you drill a taper pin out, you want to drill it out with the bit that's like the smallest end of the pin. So you don't disrupt this tapered hole and have to redrill the tapered hole. Uh, tapered drills and reamers are a little pricey. And if you don't use them all the time, you don't really want to buy them for one one job so once I got the pin out drilled it out then I was able to pop the pieces out that were on the bigger side still couldn't get this off which leads you to a point of how am I gonna disassemble this or cut something 
with the least amount of repair in the end because that's going to happen you're going to have to cut something or break something or force something apart and you want to end up when you have to absolutely have to do that with the least amount of repair in the end so i looked at this and i you know was thinking well you know we we don't want to damage the housing at all uh, that's the first thing you rule out we don't want to damage that at all Okay, so, you know, well, we could cut this shaft, obviously, take this off, and then we could get it out and just remake a shaft. And that's not out of the question, but the problem with that is, first of all, I looked at the parts diagram. This shaft is stepped about four times. It's got three different keyways. It's got a couple through holes. It, it's not the most complicated shaft out there, but it's definitely more than you really want to have to make. Okay. Second thing is if we cut this shaft off, we're still got the same problem. It's going to be inside this sleeve. So we still got to get it out. It doesn't really solve our problem. And then we don't even have anything to hold the end of the shaft. So what we did is we heated this. Now we don't want to damage this gear. We don't want to damage the clutch or anything. So we heated this end really hot. And we took, get this to zoom in, a cold chisel and we split this right beside one of those holes and I chose the bigger of the two holes so we split that shaft with a cold chisel after we heated it careful not to damage this anymore so when we split that that let us expand this end where it had been bugged out inside and let, let us uh, take this off and it leaves us with, we got a little cleanup on this. I'll put this shaft in my lathe with a tool post grinder and we'll, you know, kind of take this down. You've got this whole area here to help align it. So I'm going to take all the burrs and the bugged out areas off of this, clean this through hole up. The shaft will be great. This, all we have to do now is do a little cleanup, round this back out and weld it up and grind it back down. Least amount of repair. We didn't damage the gear, we didn't damage the clutch assembly, we didn't damage the shaft. So that, that's a little tip when you're doing this stuff. Always figure out if you if you absolutely can't get something apart and you're going to have to, you know, cut something or break something or force something, always determine what's going to give you the least amount of repair in the end. What's going to, what am I going to have to do the least amount of work to fix it back after I've purposely screwed it up? Just cut the top off of a bucket here that we get the greaser in. Here's our gearbox in there. We're just filling it up right now. So, uh, yeah, we're just going to let this soak and take care of the most filthy stuff. When we pull it out, hopefully we can just rinse off a lot of stuff before we get into the real tedious process of picking out all the chips and little pieces so we can take it apart, get everything really nice and clean, paint it, put it back together. I want to add that I... Everything moved and worked good with this gearbox. I did cycle all the gears, look at them, checked all of them, no missing teeth or chips or anything. So we're really good there. This is going to be a good unit once we get it clean. We're back at the uh, grungy, nasty, dirty, filthy parts washing station here. Over here in our bucket, we have a gearbox for the little blonde. And it's been soaking for about a week. It is in Zep Industrial Purple. That's what I use mainly. So it's it's been really good stuff for me. Uh, do take note. Do not put aluminum in this. It will be gone. To a lesser extent, brass, copper, about the same thing. So pretty much just for steel and cast iron, guys. I'm gonna dump this. You can see it's you can see it's just a little part of it sticking out there. It's been submerged. Now I, I have taken it out a few times. You can see the paint chips cluttering up our parts washer here which I typically don't like to get paint chips in the parts washer it clogs it up but I've taken it out a couple of times and kind of scrubbed it a little bit and put it back in over the past week it helps to get some of the worst grease off of it and paint so it can re-soak get down deeper but I'm gonna, I'm gonna dump this out off camera and come back and kind of show you what it looks like now alright well there it is uh, as you can see there's not much paint left on it and in fact what paint is left on it is not really 
a big deal because it's just kind of hanging on there barely. It's uh, so a light scrubbing with a little wire brush to take the rest of that paint off. There is virtually no grease left on this. See how clean those gears are? Now we're going to wash this down and then spray it with a light oil before we start working on it. The reason I soak stuff like this, I could take it apart, soak each piece, clean it individually, and probably work it a little faster doing it that way. I work on other stuff while I'm letting this thing sit. That's the first thing. Second is, why work in all that grease and chips and paint when you can just let it sit for a week, come back to it, and you're working with pretty much clean materials here. If I have to heat something now, I'm not really worried about grease catching on fire. It's, it's going to be a lot just cleaner to work with. I'm not going to be wiping my hands every two minutes, dirtying up a bunch of grease rags I have to wash later, or wasting a bunch of paper towels. Uh, stuff, stuff comes loose easier after it's soaked. You, know, you get all that grease and grime off of there. It's, it's not going to fight you as much either. Now something to note, when you dump something like this out, when you soak something, there's always a chance you miss taking something off. A pin, a key, you know, a bolt, or something just comes loose on its own that you didn't realize wasn't attached. It falls out. So make sure you dump it in. Like You see there's a grating in my parts washer. So I catch anything unless it's tiny. It's got about 8 inch holes in there. I catch about anything that'll you know that has come loose but you just want to make sure of that and I will go through that goop I'll rinse it out and send it through a strainer and make sure nothing has fell out that I've missed because you can lose some very small important parts sometimes a prime example and I sometimes I'll do this on purpose in fact I did this time that shaft has a woodruff key in it now I couldn't get that woodruff key out easy to start with so I'll let it soak, get some of the grease and stuff out. Now I'm going to work with it. It's going to be clean, easy to work with, and I'll be able to get it out. But there was potential that that could have fallen out once it soaked. The grease came out of it. It could have just fallen out in this bucket that's over here. So that, that's stuff to be mindful of. These bolts, you know, I could have not had them. I just stuck these back in when I took it apart. But there's, you know, I might not have had them in all the way and one of them fell out and I forgot about it. So just watch for that. Make sure you got all your parts back when you when you take something like this out. If you lose a part, it's probably going to be that real important part you can't find or can't replace easier, or it's going to be a pain to make. So keep that in mind. So we will start tearing this gearbox apart and get it rebuilt.